was the GIF going to look like today? Which actually I learned it's called a GIF, not a GIF. Oh, Do you know that? Everybody everybody calls it a GIF, yeah. but it was a thing on Jimmy Fallon. So that's like, like, is it a GIF or a That's like GIF? the pho and pho thing. Right? Some people say pho, some say pho. It's pho. And wait, you say pho? No, like pho blinds? Or you no, talking I'm talking about, about like the food. The food, oh. Okay. Like pho, pho. I've only had it once, but my wife is con very convinced it's pho and yeah. everybody else is convinced it's something else. And I'm like, it's my wife's family, <laughs> My wife's family, they used to call fajitas, fajitas. Okay. And it was always, I was like, they're not fajitas, they're fajitas. <laughs> Anyways. Got it. It's technically a GIF, but a GIF. I digress. So I'll say GIF. I still can't. But now I can't. This is now. all per Jimmy Fallon. GIF. GIF. Got it. Yeah. All right. So I'm glad we had that talk. Yes. Um, where were we? <laughs> we were talking know. about. What's up, everybody? Today we have Jason Pantana on the show. And Jason is a business coach and national speaker for Tom Ferry, as well as a just phenomenal friend. So Jason, how about you tell us, you know, just a couple of sentences other than what I've already said about you? Well, I will confirm my name is Jason. <laughs> and yep, I'm a Hopefully. coach and speaker with Tom Ferry. In fact, we're here on site. I've uh, been leading Marketing Edge all day for Tom Ferry, one of our traveling roadshows, where we spend two days going deep into marketing strategies and tactics to grow your business. Uh, specifically working with real estate professionals for the most part. Uh, but really, I mean, marketing is marketing. I mean, and business ownership and small business is small business. And so we're just diving into social and so forth and all the things that work. Uh, what you didn't say, I live in Nashville. Uh, I got two little sweet little guys, two little boys and my wife. And uh, life's good, man. Pumped and, to be here. And what's great about every single episode on this podcast. We've always talked about business, but I make sure no matter what, we always talk about family. So I'm glad that you mentioned it yeah. before I got to it. <laughs> nah, I mean, what's the point in doing anything if you can't share it with the people you love? And I always like to use the law of the bullseye example of saying to an agent, hey, would you rather work with somebody that's in the middle, $10 million listing, you're guaranteed to get it, or would you rather hit the $100,000 listing on the outside? They're like, $10 million listing, of course. Of course. But if I tell them, anxiety, stress, divorce, you're going to be addicted to alcohol, <laughs> you're going on drugs, you're going to be out of the business. Unfortunately, a lot of people will be like, $10 million, big paycheck. Um, There's a cost benefit uh, analysis. Like, oh man, it's like, whoa. And then if I tell them, well, the people on the outside, if you would have worked with those, they would have been your best friends. They would have loved the things that you love to do. You would have you know, been their friends afterwards and they would have referred you somebody who would have referred you somebody, who would have referred you somebody, and you would have had a business and life that you love. And mm -hmm. that's why I think that the personal aspect is huge. We were talking about LinkedIn yeah. and, um, or trying to talk about LinkedIn because we're not, we're, we're, not ex we're not, we're not experts in LinkedIn, but we're, we're, we're having internal musings and both observing some potential in the LinkedIn space. Exactly. We're realizing that, okay, something might be happening with LinkedIn. So probably oh, we should be doing something slash undoing some stuff as well. Maybe. Tell us more about the undoing as we let our folks into the conversation we've been having for 30 minutes. Yeah, I think the undoing part comes back into making sure that your profiles are not in third person. Inundated. Oh, oh yeah. Inundated. Sorry, inundated third person. <laughs> your last article was in 2011. You just graduated <laughs> college and that was your last article. <laughs> like, wait, what has happened in the last nine yeah, years? I think out of the gate, anybody who's going to jump into LinkedIn and listen, ourselves included, because we're both all kind of like coming out of the winter, so to speak. Yes. Because the feedback that I'm getting in other spaces, even outside of real estate is, and I get really good natural reach. I'm getting a lot of engagement on LinkedIn. Uh, I think a lot of people have sort of left it buried for some time, yours truly included here, but I am getting engagement on it. However, the things I think a lot of people are running into is their profiles, right? They've got a, you made the comment of changing the tense. And so I'll let you elaborate on that point. Um, and it's because it's your point, it's a good one. But also like they haven't posted in a long time. So getting back in the routine of posting, whether through articles or through actual post, commenting on other people's posts, I think for a lot of people, they've just, I don't know, maybe I'm alone, but they haven't really scrutinized whose connections they're accepting. I think what a lot of people are gonna have to do first is clean it up. Uh, get rid of some connections. What was that thing you were saying, the extension to help you do that? It's a link, it's called linked helper. It's essentially it has tons of different things, but one of them is to get you to remove connections for you, but it does it in a safe way. So that way, I'm sure there's tons of spammy things out there. We could just like get yeah. rid of people, but it actually like goes through the process of clicking remove, 
going down and yes, I definitely want to remove scrolling back up, yeah. waiting 15 seconds, like yeah. doing some things for you. Because like you said, usually the reason why most people, including myself, don't use LinkedIn is because it's spam. It's a wasteland right email, now. Email <laughs> or spam yeah. email. And when I go on it, all the posts that I see, I have no clue who these people are. I don't. And that's my own fault, <laughs> right? It's yeah. my fault for accepting those relationships. But I think here's what we know. We know that people are starting to see solid engagement on LinkedIn. They've got some pretty cool features and tools they've rolled out. Their advertising platform is affordable and it's got some pretty interesting targeting options. But I think for people to really get in on LinkedIn, the first thing they have to do is make it usable for themselves, which means removing connections that... Because it's been a spammy platform for a lot of people who just make connections like, hey, I'd love to be your friend. Thanks so much for this. And they send you in-mail that you don't want. Yes. And so you got to clean it up. That's step one. Um, elaborate. This is your show, but elaborate on what you said about the uh, clean up your profiles, change the tents. Yeah. So just going back in and look at your LinkedIn first off and, you know, look at your URL, look at all these different things, but just look at the way that you wrote things in the past. You usually wrote things... Um, in a third party tense saying, you know, Jonathan did X, Y, Z, and he was this person and blah, blah, blah. And when you're reading that, it's like, okay, is that really how I talk? Yeah. Is that really the things that I want people to know about me? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I went back in, I changed my bio up. I even went back into my work experience and like changed up a lot in my military experience. It was like, he led a, you know, XYZ yeah, yeah, yeah. troop and did this, 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 and was the battalion commander of XYZ and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, so and what how would you, you have actually told somebody what you did? I served along, you know, 75 great soldiers. I led them being the youngest officer in the entire military intelligence corps of the entire U.S. Army while I was in charge. This is what I've done while I did this X, Y, and, and just yeah. talk about exactly what I did. Yeah. Not, you know, just broad terms. I think actually that LinkedIn is actually not the thing that's kind of flying under the carpet. I think actually that it is Instagram stories that are getting promoted. Okay. And all right, punt, take us over there. So a lot of people are using Instagram stories, as you know, a lot more than people just going on to post and, and whatnot. There's yeah. tons of things that you can do. Yeah, they're fun. In Instagram stories that are fun. Interactive. Interactive. Can spark conversations. Spark where I can conversations. DM. They can lead you to different places. Yes. They can have you go through a series of different posts yes. and get engagement. And the more engagement that you're doing leads to even more engagement. Yep. You could put hashtags behind your post or hidden you can Camouflage within. them. Yep. Camouflage. You can force people to click things. And you're like, wait, I can force people to click things. Yeah, if you just share your new post onto your story, enlarge it and put it to the right-hand side where everybody just clicks next, well, then they <laughs> automatically click it and they automatically go into your page. It's like, oh yeah, that actually is a forced page. Mm -hmm. But what they're not doing, um, and we are doing, is promoting stories. So the, the difference in stories and promotions and ads and whatnot is you cannot promote anything. Are you familiar with Instagram yeah. stories promotions? So a lot of people are not, and we've been tinkering around with them because yes. there are things you can't do that you would love to do, like send somebody to your website instantly mm -hmm. because you can't have a clickable link and you can't have specific things in your stories. But uh, one of the hacks that we've been doing is we've always been setting up the next post from the promotion. What I mean by is on the next Instagram story, that's going to lead to our website or that's going to do this or that's going to do something. So we promote the one previous, which is- Which just, can't have the outbound link, but the correct. next one can. But it can't. But once they get into your story, okay, they're going to be like, okay, well, who's this guy or what's happening or yep. wow, that- post was awesome, whatever it may be. And they click to see the next one and bam, now you got them onto your page. Are you doing promotions on Instagram? Do you know people that are doing them? I'm seeing it more and more, but not, not directly per se. I do see the potential. I mean, at the end of the day, like the reach is really solid. The interactive features, the way to get conversations sparked, the way to get leads as far as DMs and swipe up and all those features is pretty awesome with Instagram stories. I'll be honest, even if you promote or don't promote, whichever way, I mean, tell me this, what's your biggest advantage by promoting? Why promote? Get your story seen by more people. So it's just reach, right? Correct. So at the end of the day, it's like, even if you're not promoting, you're still getting good reach and still great exposure. Uh, as far as 
hashtags use. I'm seeing people who are getting like they're getting an explore feed and so forth just by using hashtags. So my thought would be maximize your organic reach with every story. But I mean the promote, why not do it? It's cheap. It's super cheap and it and actually what I've seen is the targeting is actually better than not boosting, but actually promoting a, a post from Instagram when you promote an actual story it actually allows you to get more granule. Mm -hmm. You like that word? I liked it. <laughs> it was really, it was fancy. Um, and it allows you actually to get a, a lot closer to your people in one mile radius doing different things. Um, I don't know. Is, Which any, could be super thoughts? effective. Like, I mean, I could imagine that being applied in an open house setting where you've got an event in a key location. You want to get very granular in terms of, there, I did it again. You see that? Your see, word, I yeah. told you, you like the word granule. Yeah. It really took... <laughs> If you tell something really good, <laughs> you can make them laugh at us. I feel like I'm watching Full House. There you go. <laughs> what advice would you give to somebody that's using Instagram stories, not from a promotion, because usually the excuse right off the gate is, I, I don't have the budget to do it. And we know that, okay, there's tons five, of five things. Bucks? Yeah, exactly. Right? There's tons of things that we can throw at that. But let's say, okay, throwing promotions aside, in Instagram stories, what should an agent be doing if they're not already doing it? Well, let's start with the obvious, Occam's razor, right? Let's start with the very simple explanation or the easiest solution. One, I would say you should be posting your stories periodically throughout the day. Uh, a lot of agents will do one and they won't do another or they'll do like three in a row and then not do it for hours that are passing. But the benefit of doing it all day long periodically throughout the day is whenever you post a new story, you show up sort of in the most visible place for the common eye to see you. So people are drawn back in to keep checking out your latest story. So it's a way to kind of re-expose and just sort of top of mind awareness over and over and over again. So definitely the idea of posting the stories throughout the day. That's a really obvious one. I think, I think actually where that a lot of people get confused is recently they allow you to select multiple and that's actually hurt people because now they've thought, hey, I could just pull out my camera, I can click, you know, photo, video, or whatever, and then go back. And then what they do is they just start clicking don't nine batch posts. Don't, do batch yeah. don't batch out. Don't batch out. Don't batch out because you're giving, because you're only gonna get, you're only gonna, you're not really notifying anybody, but the way it works is the header bar, you know this, but I'll tell anybody else who doesn't. The main header shows the little circle profile images. They have a little pink hue around them, a ring that indicates a new story. But if you batch out and do like all nine at the same time, it's only going to show the ring once somebody clicks it and they're done. So at that point, you've lost the chance to be re-exposed to that particular audience. Yeah. And I think it's huge staying to that top left because even if they don't click your story for whatever reason, they still see your face. Most people are not, not clicking. They are clicking, but like you said, they see your face to ask me anything. Mm -hmm. You've been doing them. I've seen them. They're super effective too, where you ask me anything and you post a topic or whatever and people do questions and you go back and respond. I've done what I call the reverse question where I ask the question and instead of you asking me the question, you respond with an answer. Mm -hmm. So I'll say things to agents like, you could do this to like, it's an agent. I yeah. could say like, hey, what are the best restaurants in 12 South or whatever? And instead of asking a question, use the sticker for a question, but they can respond. So I think like the obvious use of Instagram is make it, make it interactive. Use the yes, no polls as often as you can. Use the sliding scale as often as you can. Tell them to DM you. If you have more than 10,000 followers, say swipe up or whatever, but make that thing interactive where they can click and do and engage and spark a conversation. If you're doing that all day long, it's good content. And I obviously know that a lot of people are now in Instagram stories. So just one way to be a little bit different since yeah, okay, you've seen stickers now, you've seen music. It's like, okay, how am I going to be different? Well, we've created our own GIFs. And, That's a good one, yeah. And so now- Are you using Giphy or how are you doing I'm it? I'm using Giphy. Giphy. And, and now we have our own cartoons that are telling people to swipe up and they're telling it's people good. about new posts and whatnot. Polls or whatnot. I don't think a lot of people actually utilize polls correctly. Mm -hmm. So they ask a question with a poll, yes or no, but then they don't go back and respond to the people that said oh, yes, yes or no. Failure, right? There's an act. There's a little envelope right next to the people. It'll actually categorize. Click yes. Who said yes? Who said yeah, no? You can respond, and you can respond to both sides. If yeah. they said no, why did they say no? If they said follow yes, up with the DM. great. Follow up. 
That's what I like about them. They're interactive. You can have fun and be a goof or be whoever you are. But there is a monumental opportunity to get people to engage with your post. By that, I mean they say yes, they say no, they respond, they ask questions, they slide the scale. It's interactive. And if you're not playing to that feature of what it, I mean, that's what it does. What's one good piece of advice for somebody in the social realm that, um, not necessarily that's underutilized, but maybe something that they're doing that they should be doing it differently or looking at it differently other than, you know, Instagram stories, promotions, other than, hey, go clean up your LinkedIn. It's like, what's something that somebody can Let's listen to this episode? Yeah. Super easy, no budget behind it. Like, okay, I can actually do that. Well, I mean, this is going to be echoing the whole conversation, but stories. So like we give the hack in our ecosystem, it's Tom Ferry's, but Hey, are you currently living in your dream home now? Yes or no? Do a story, add the yes or no sticker. And then when people say yes or no, you reply to the DMs and you message back and forth with them. You said, no, you're not. I'm an agent. How can I help you fix that? Or just asking a calibrated question and making these things interactive because the beauty of stories is they become DMs. Whereas a post, the response is gonna be a comment. That's great, but a DM is a private conversation and we all know in sales, a private conversation is a super powerful tool to get to an appointment. So I would say like the obvious thing is, go start posting stories every now and again that are looking for people to give you a response that's calibrated, meaning it tells you they're either potentially looking to buy or sell. Now, I'm not giving permission to say spam people and just be about your business all the time. Like this should be done with discretion over time when your audience knows you. But again, stories should be interactive. What do you think about Facebook stories? And now YouTube uh, actually just released stories. I but, haven't checked those out yet. So what? Uh, so f Facebook stories is the exact same way I think about LinkedIn, just regular, just LinkedIn, is that nobody's really using it. I'll tell you why, or my theory why. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, man, my stories sync over from Instagram, yes, right? That's, I just, that's my fine. stories were always organic to Instagram. That's they sync fine. over. But the reason why I think people don't really care about Facebook stories is like, where's the main place to view them? Uh, on the top. Yeah. And then if you go to your page, like your sometimes circle, they're in messenger, kind sometimes of like, they're there, but they're really in the top. But on Instagram, all you see is an icon of the profile. Yeah. I don't know what the story is. There's a surprise. Yeah. But oh, on Facebook, because they give you that rectangle. On Facebook, they show the rectangle and they show me a thumbnail of the dumb story. So why would I click it? I already see what it is. So the, the good thing about it is it's similar to the way Instagram works is they do disappear. What's cool about Facebook is rather than just sharing automatically, what you can do is you can do one story either for Instagram and Facebook or just for Facebook, since they do see that picture, you put something with like huge arrows or you do something yeah, to yeah, where yeah. it's like, oh man, and when, then they'll click it, yeah. I guess. You, you could, right? Because it's a thumbnail. So the same logic applies as the thumbnail you use on a YouTube video. Yeah. It's designed to get someone to want to open it up and take the next look or go deeper. But I think for the average user, I mean, stories are 24 hour disappearing content. Yeah, And so most people aren't putting an exorbitant amount of time and effort into creating a story, nor should they. It should be quick. I mean, there should be a strategy behind anything you do because it matters, but they should, they should be quick. You're doing like 20 a day. That's a ton of stories for most people. But to do that many stories over the course of time, I mean, I don't know. I just, you're giving away the element of surprise yeah. on Facebook. And I would argue that's a big reason why they're down. Got it. 2018 NAR digital age report mm -hmm. on where leads come from. Yep. The number one source was organic social media. That was 46% of all Did ads. Did they define a lead? They defined a lead as somebody who commented or sent a message as, okay. hey, I want to do X or Y or Z. So they specifically said, I want to buy, I want to sell, I want to lease. Not necessarily, but- Or they, they inquired. They inquired on- all right. Some type of information. It okay. wasn't like a, a like. Counts. It wasn't a like, and it wasn't a comment like hands up emoji or okay. It, it was, was an inquiry. It was a kind question a like, oh, tell me more. Oh, what's that about? Oh, I'm renting a house for twenty five hundred dollars. I, I can buy a house for how much? Like yeah. th those were classified. But it's as leads. not just to be clear. It's not necessarily limited to. I have a name, number, and email. Definitely not. All right, got it. Keep going. So forty six percent organic. 16% was paid, meaning from ads that agents used, only 16% of all leads in the entire lead space came from paid ads. 
What are your thoughts on that? Because I have huge thoughts on that. I have that. lots of questions. Okay. Can you tell me your thoughts and then we'll see if we're thinking the same thing? Yeah, so my thoughts are a lot of people instantly jump into ads, but their pages suck. They don't have any comments. They don't have any posts. They have no videos. They have no stories. They have no trust. They have no trust and people have absolutely no clue who that person is. And then they get an ad in front of them saying, your, your other realtor sucks because your listing just expired, so you should use me. And then they come back and say, I didn't get any leads from that ad. Shocking. And the reason is they have no clue who you well, are. It's out of context. They don't trust you. Who, who, who are Why you? Why should they respond to you? I've never seen you ever. And, and so many people want to put so much money, the money that they can put behind ads, when they don't even realize what's going on on their actual page because nothing's going on on their actual page. Right. And instantly what they're doing is they're outsourcing their post. And that's kind of where I want to get into is what do you think, what is your advice on the people that are outsourcing their organic, that should be organic posts? So they're getting these clip art images, these videos of people that are- Not them. Not them. Actors from- yeah. Shutterfly or and whatever. And it's like the entire video. It's not like it's a couple of B-roll scenes. It's like the entire video is like, Jonathan Hawkins is just a phenomenal agent. And he does, it's you like- You like Jonathan Hawkins. Yeah, and he it's a girl saying quality. that with that with that same <laughs> type of voice. It's like, wait, what is happening right now? You work with him. Okay. <laughs> All right, so outsourcing. I'm understanding you to describe it as canned content. So your theory is the reason why people aren't getting leads off of paid ads is because they're putting out canned content that's not authentic whatsoever to an audience who has no context for who they are, what they stand for, et cetera. And so therefore there's a reluctance on the part of the lead to engage or comment or respond or ask questions. Is that your point? If I had a dollar sign, money sign, whatever, it would have been bring. Right. Yes, that's the point. I think that stands the reason. I have questions on how do they define a lead still. Okay. Just because I tend to be very buzzword granular. That's my MO. But um, my initial thought is- Let's just where say most, we're not even talking well, about here's, leads. Here's my theory. Most people's business in the real estate space, where does it come from? Their sphere? Yeah, so referrals and repeat business from sphere, past clients, et cetera. The people you know- that's unsurprising because this is a relationship business. It's a high trust business, meaning buying, selling a house is a monumental transaction, the biggest ever for most people. And so they're looking to work with somebody that they feel gets them, knows them, whom they can trust. And so therefore, my question would be in this poll, did you constitute a lead as somebody you did not know or could it be somebody you did know? So I don't care about the stats. Let's throw the stats out for a second. Let's right. just talk about an agent that is... Coming to you, they're saying, hey, Jason, we're at this event. It's phenomenal. We want to run an ad. We want to, you know, we want to generate 20,000 leads like Good. somebody else that you named did. We want to do this. We want to do this. We want to do this. But that person has no content on their page. And if they do have content, their content yeah. is not, not something so the they would say. the person I talked about was Mike Rennick. Okay. Generated 20,000 leads. Do you know what he did? He creates five videos a week. The dude's a content hound. He makes content. He gives, he gives, he gives, he gives, he gives. So that, that way, the, so that way, the moment that he asks for something, it's, oh, that's the guy that that's does this. That's the guy who this. does this video in that video. That's the guy who's constantly educating me. That's the guy who cares about me. So what would your one piece of advice, and we'll wrap it up with this. What's your one piece of advice for somebody that's, you know, who, who should I use to create my content? What, what, what would your advice be to that person? Which camera's on? It's it's this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's please don't outsource your, your family story, your story. Look, we said today at the event, we're at Marketing Edge. What's the job of marketing? And we teach our audience, it's twofold. One, I got to brand myself and then I've got to generate leads. But one comes before the other. And the idea of branding the whole point is to create a feeling of trust and familiarity and rapport. If the first thing I do is say, I'm too busy to build rapport, like give me a break, no one's gonna respond to that. And so I understand that there's a time constraint and then you're like, well guys, in this podcast alone, you've talked about LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, I can't do everything. No, you, you can't. can't, but you can do what you do. You can choose it deliberately, specifically, and you can go all in on it. Um, I don't think there's a way to get around creating content. I think there are ways to streamline creating content, 
But I think if it, my personal belief is it's got to come from you. It's got to come from you. You can streamline it through a schedule. But at the end of the day, if that time hits, you don't have a post ready, move on. It's okay. It's Go to okay. the next day. Don't next don't day. search Google for a random clip art image just to have the image go out because it's not going to help you. No, I think consistency matters. I think you should accept a schedule you can commit to. I do. I think some people have a perfectionistic tendency where they don't push post because it's not good enough yet. They're not really who we're talking to right now. That's no. a different issue. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a different issue. Yeah, and uh, we could be here all night. We could be here all night. And before we go, where right. can people find you? Uh, on social media. They can find me. I am Jason Pantana. It's like Santana with a P, P-A-N-T-A-N-A. -A -A. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on YouTube. My most active platforms are Instagram and Facebook. Would love to connect with you there. And do you give out coal or presents? <laughs> presents. You <laughs> said like, like Santa. That? I don't know. No, I said Santana, oh, the guitarist. So you play music. Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.